This man is the most... C'est parti It will be insane, holy shit, ok. Bonjour à tous. Hello, hello everyone. On se retrouve aujourd'hui pour la deuxième live, parce que right. après, il y avait un petit live we, sur Retro. We combat. find each other again for a second live, because we had a little retro live. We meet each other to talk about the Unity beta only. I'm uh, here with two people, with one new of them, that we've never seen before. New person. So we will stay polite, we will present ourselves. Hello, my name is Ribek. <laughs> if you've seen some lives on the last month, you will have uh, necessarily seen me. I manage the project on uh, Dofus. I'm Koto. I'm developer, simply put. Client side, client side. So typically, to discuss Unity, in order to discuss Unity, um, Koto is one of the best people to uh, let's say I have tried to dissociate three points. The first one is uh, service side. Let's start with the positive uh, things, first of all. Service side, we have done many modifications as we've said. Um, this goes back a little bit, but the uh, management of uh, the queue and getting you inside the game. This has worked really, really well and we're so happy with the results. Um, if you remember on the very last few temporises, the 6th and 7th, the seventh especially, it was really complicated to get in. The queues were very long, but now, but now we have more games, uh, more people. We have less problems than in any normal beta while having more people. Servers were open, people were able to get in quite easily, and uh, we haven't had any feedback to say that there was any sort of lag or any problems necessary to correct any lag at the point of entering because we've had too many people. So these are some things that are not necessarily visible for you and here it's uh, usually with the mono account where uh, a lot of players have had problems logging in or retrieving their uh, characters. So we will go back on every single topic that are spicy, that are spiky. We will go back on everything and discuss it in great length. So on this very topic, um, when it comes to the opening of the new servers at the end of the year, in theory, it, we, we, t we theoretically expect that there will be more people. And uh, we don't want to put any limits per servers, but we are confident that uh, we are able to manage the influx of new players and things like that. So. I'm just opening little parentheses here very quickly on the live in particular. We have done some modifications um, that happened during last week. Oh, I'm really sorry about this. We will try to pass the updates on Flash before Unity is released in December just to be sure that certain modifications are perfect and ready for uh, the uh, final. So that was the first part. The second part is um, that we've mentioned. And here we wanted to talk to you about which is the client side which is functional side purely so this is the porting the functioning how it worked were there bugs were there crashes on the performance and things like that uh, recently or from the start oh, i'm really sorry i'm gonna have to switch because i can't deal with with these headsets There's a point that is really important to keep in mind. We were never able to correct as many things in less time while dealing with the novelty and everything. If we had the same problems on Flash, on Flash we would have possibly uh, solved them in a year or two. So just so you know, the porting itself is a technical thing which allows us to allow uh, to, to change the, the, the underlying technology and be more reactive. It will be up to you to uh, react and see for yourselves. We react quite quickly and solve problems, but for bugs, in, it, we don't know how many tickets we've solved in one week. There is a, there was a mass, uh, one masses of them. <laughs> and there are some that are quite in the queue right now because we didn't have time to test everything because we're debugging so many of them. So 
there are some that we fixed without we have so many tickets coming in that we sometimes don't debug stuff we just fix and put and push the solution without having to worry about it there's so many in uh, the queue that were sort of worried about taking our time and stuff like that so there were so many bugs and clearly Did we do some debugging well, to find out if there were problems? Yes, but it were quick sessions. I can't possibly tell you that we've had big gaming sessions where we try to find problems and resolve them and stuff like that. Um, we had to go over uh, some uh, things that were quite basic. That's why we overlooked some things that were quite basic. But we wish we were able to do more uh, lengthy testing and stuff like that. But in all honesty, yeah, yeah, it, it was quite the carnage, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've, we're getting uh, shell shocks. <laughs> from the, you have to know that we have about two hundred and fifty interfaces. We can't test all of them. The code is rather used, um, copied and pasted in many places. We didn't have time to test every single places, and very quickly you get side effects. So you fix something here and it breaks something there. Yeah, yeah, this is the reality of it. Sadly. We, f we think that something is fixed, the testers go over it, they find that it's fixed, but then it breaks something in the back that we don't see or that we've tested before and it was alright. Just when it comes to the bug part, I was, you were so numerous to bring back the problems. Just today, there were 89 or 90 pages of forum posts just on the bug part. <laughs> it was insane. It was insane. Is reading comments. We are at 4,890 around subjects, so nearly 5,000 open topics in one week is not something to joke about. You guys did, did some fucking work, really. Ah, the fucking cat. You're mad, people. You're crazy. <laughs> You're passionate. <laughs> What passion for this game you guys have, it's crazy, it's consuming, it's insane. You have turned up, you've given us feedback, we've asked for it, you've given us the feedback that we've asked for, and uh, there you go, there you go. <laughs> so my plan essentially was to answer every single forum post to thank them for their uh, post, for their forum post. But I think 90 page, by the time I answer one post, you add five or seven more. So I will never be able to catch, and the only way I can catch up is if I deactivate the forum, answer all of them, and then open it again. <laughs> so, my, my let, so you will have noticed my latest responses are a lot less human because I don't have enough time to look at them and express myself fully. And sadly, what this is what happened we found that a lot of uh, subjects that were uh, duplicates, like you mentioned. On the first day, I have seen at least a 50 posts on the very first day. When you click uh, escape, it doesn't close the tab or it brings back the um, uh, end of game screen. And generally, I answer very quickly to say that it has been answered. So there were loads of tickets, loads of bugs, load of uh, problems that you've brought up. And we didn't have enough time to answer all of them, but we still have done them. That was part two, the bugs and forums. So part three right now is the client server. If, if, if I will say to um, wrap up all the modifications, all the novelties and stuff to do with U Unity, uh, whether it be the animations, the artistic direction, the interfaces and maps. These are the four big topics, if I can say, that you guys have brought back. So we will talk about all four of them. Let's go. <laughs> we have enough con content to do one live for each one of these four. I don't know if you realize or listen to us, but <laughs> but yeah, it's massive. Let's start with the map part, first of all. Uh, I want to apologize, first of all, about what I said during the live. I've seen that some people have brought it back as, I've, as if I said the um, uh, dungeon maps were not modified, which was some players went to verify immediately after the beta opening to tell me that you lied. <laughs> I, and I've said it live, I'm really sorry. I'm completely sorry. I will try and stop saying things during lives that I'm not 100% certain of. I've laughed, so Papino laughed at him. 
I laughed because I remember the dr the meme of the person that is uh, apologizing. Some meme, some French meme that someone apologizing with tears in their eyes. He reminded them of that. Anyway, sorry. I wanted to go. I wanted to start with this disclaimer about maps. When it comes to maps themselves, there's many topics that were um, that were quite different. The first ones were the animations of the maps themselves. To my knowledge, I did not see any sort of negative feedback about map animations they are not bad not nothing to say that they are too overwhelming or stuff like that it's usually um they were weird in the beginning but then you get used to them but we are forced to observe that uh, the the only the only limit to what he's saying is the uh, smith's dungeon uh, cards <laughs> which were going mental and many of you have spotted that <laughs> So we've noticed we've got some feedback on some uh, a bunch of um, like clusters of animations that were a bit too violent, a bit too rough. But we we're fam we know them. So there's Bustache Dungeon as well, which we had uh, lots of feedback on, which uh, all the flashes were a bit too much and all the animations were a bit over the top. And uh, I can't remember exactly. Somebody made a video about this to say that while it was too beautiful, it's overwhelming and too, too much. So there are people that prefer it for it to be too discreet. Others much prefer it than, than, than flashbangs and mad stuff. So this was the first point, the animations of maps, right? Next one is the texture. So it's the system of blurriness in the background. There's two things about this. The first one is during the changelog of this uh, afternoon, the remoteness, there will be a first bug that will be corrected, which is, is when you go full screen, the resolu resolution was completely smoked. It was ruined. Yeah, yeah, it's true, yeah. So it favored, um, yeah, so, it, so there was also uh, the same effect was happening with the characters as well. Oh, I want some Bluetooth headsets. I do not remember exactly when it happened between uh, the day off and uh, the weekends we've had. I think it was that. So the test we've done, it was used uh, Wednesday uh, during the day and we've put it in place Friday. And what happened exactly is... Um, we could explain it in more details for us maybe. So in essence, what has happened is there was a ne necessarily a op an optimization problem. So what we wanted is for the map to not take very long to load. So what we've done is the quality of image uh, was affected. So on Thursday, what we've done is we've taken the images of the bodies, the, the non-animated bodies, um, and we've augmented the quality of those simply in the background. Uh, uh, it's, it's not too costly, it's not too heavy, it would have been compared to animations and stuff like that, but yeah. So the perfor we would have had a big loss in performance. The yeah. So most people have said that the environment is a bit too blurry, too foggy, but there was also losses on character uh, quality. So what we've done is uh, we've doubled the quality in characters to make sure that they are cleaner renders and when the environment will go back to it but it's something that will happen because it will take a lot of time and that's what i'm saying in the future yeah so essentially on the environment the background we want to avoid that the client uh be huge and i've, re I've answered i think you've answered this one on a forum post what we've proposed is a hd packs uh, hold on, hold on, no, 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 pause, pause, pause. You guys are mad. <laughs> Back HD. I hope it's not gonna be paid. Yes, of course it's not gonna be paid. Yes, <laughs> you crazy bastards. <laughs> we want, we don't want to propose an ugly ass game. So in essence, the HD pack will be available. It will be free. It will be on the launcher for you guys to download. Anyone will be a paid thing. Don't worry about it. I've seen some answers on the forum directly. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not gonna say that they were a bit too. I was a bit. I'm not gonna go as far as going to. I was mad. I, some of your comments and responses, but I was nearly there. <laughs> so we talked about the animations, the texture, now let's talk about fights. For fights, there were two elements that were quite important. The first one was tactical mode, and the other one was the map size. When it comes to map size, the first thing was, uh, we have told you that at low level, the maps it was by design that maps be smaller because characters have less movement points, monsters as well, we have less spells, so we really wanted to reduce the time you spend chasing around. But as we've mentioned, at high level, the game has become 
uh, mid distance the meta has changed so this is something that we have modified that we, we will modify as well to uh, enlarge the size of the maps so again this is something that we want to observe during the beta this is what the beta is for things that we've worked for for a really long time internally and we're not going to go back and change everything to redo every map and have an exclusive one. We don't have the possibility to do that. The size is humongous and we don't have enough time. But what we want to do is um, these five methods that we have right now and propose some brilliant modifications so that you have the game that you know right now. And without the meta change as we know it right now. There are so a lot of modifications that are coming very soon, um, as I've said. So that we have the... Um, placements for them to be a bit uh, further away, slightly larger maps, and we will work in parallel as well as the size of the maps, also have a, um, a random positioning, starting position, because now it feels a bit claustrophobic when everybody's in the same line and things like that. Anyway, uh, and uh, the obstacles that we've seen in the map is something that breaks the flow of the game too much, and we, it's something that we're thinking about, it's points that we're working on, we're thinking about, and uh, yeah, we realized, yeah, we need to change them. And essentially, it's not enshrined in truth, it's things that would get better. It's just we need a few days, we need more than three days. This is the stuff that we've discovered after just three days of testing. So, if, if things are not good, we're not going to go back. We're just going to enhance what the proposition is uh, in the future. We're not going to abandon everything. We need to verify, first of all, uh, once the changes uh, are passed, have they better things or they uh, have they solved the problem and things like that. And then we can move on with another solution if need be. I've said there were two points on maps. Uh, there's three points, really. The question was um, the legibility of the tactical mode. So, there are many points in this very f this one. The first one is uh, the legibility of the squares themselves. Are they comprehensible? It's a system that we had in Colosseum, but it wasn't necessary in Colosseum, but we've uh, added it to PVM. It is necessary in PVM, but we've had some feedback about it, it wasn't necessarily uh, visible, like with glyphs, and it was too visually charged for players to be able to discern a lot of what was happening. And we've had some really good feedback about the tactical mode itself. I have promised myself to not use the word mixed mixed feedback because we got slapped for that one because we've used it about the artistic direction in the post. <laughs> I've done that myself. <laughs> but on the legibility of the tactical mode, I've seen a lot of good and uh, bad returns, generally speaking. Yeah, so uh, in fact, hold on, it's not, it's something that we've discussed with Manaya for a while, who is our communication responsible for uh, Dofus. She will do a uh, vote, a poll, to gather, maybe towards this week, next week, she will do a poll that will appear in Flash and in the beta to get real numbers about how happy you are about some things, which is really important to us. Uh, yes, when it comes to tactical maps, we talk a lot about that, but not everything is bad or everything is good. Say, uh, these are things that need to be enhanced and bettered, for sure, but not everybody loves it and not everybody hates it. So, we don't know exactly where the balance tilts. As Lex is saying, 90, 10, they want to verify that with numbers. So we need to figure out exactly where the balance lies, and if it's 95, 5, then the, the question is not asking itself, we will have to fix it, it's, it's something that is quite unanimous, we won't have to say mixed feelings, but if it's 55, 45, then we will be able to say, well, <laughs> yeah, so, don't, if if we have 50-50 in a poll, don't think that we'll be happy with that, that's not what we're aiming for, that's not what we want, we want, for, we want a solid 95-5, <laughs> these are the Ankama numbers, <laughs> Some of you like numbers, so we've used numbers in this lab. So the problem with if, if we share numbers, a lot of people will say uh, the poll results are rigged, you've manufactured the names, so we don't know whether to share them or not at the end of the day. <laughs> so one, la one last uh, poll that we've had, we've done on the artistic direction, we did not want to share them. Uh, I think we should have. We should have. The results were quite good. We were happy with the results. It was things that we've observed on the long term. And that's why we've done more lives during the whole year, so we can reveal the, the artistic direction to you. But uh, when it comes to the poll, I'm not talking about the better now, it was the poll before the better. W when we've done a few months after the lives about the artistic direction and stuff, players were majoritarily okay with, but they liked less their class, yes? The moment it wasn't your class, 
numbers were good, and the moment it was your class, we talked about 50-50, yeah. <laughs> and so what happened is uh, we had a lot of... Um, the, the, your your your, uh, your uh, opinions have evolved now that you have unity between your hands and stuff like that. We will do a uh, poll, and I'm certain that your opinions will have changed and stuff like that. So let's finish with the map top topic so we don't um, get too scattered. And I've seen a lot of people asking questions about the artistic direction. I promise you guys we will talk about it in this live. Don't worry about it. It's happening. Uh, let's finish on the maps first of all. I forgot what I was going to say, so I get to have a sip. Oh yes, the tactical mode, um, the tactical mode pull, the legibility of maps. Here again, we will see the results to see what has happening with this tactical mode. Tactical mode, in reality, uh, in my opinion, it becomes really essential for really high level content. Um, for the entirety of the game, uh, especially in the fact, in order to think the better very well. Uh, it plays very well, this is what we're fighting. The semi-tactical mode that we have right now, on low level, is... It's beautiful, I think they like it, it's bomb. People have said that it's quite good, they like it, it's brilliant, the tact semi-tactical mode. Now, the anime, oh, we will see... Uh, we've also had, there's another point about the interface animation and spell animation as well. Uh, there were lots of worries that were expressed expressed about this. The animations were fluid in the fight, I've, but I, but I also have seen uh, the time, the turn time. I've posted an image about this earlier. The turn time, playing animations and stuff like that, between Flash and Unity, and I've seen the comparisons uh, being made. The turn times, animation times, uh, spell cast times. So Flash is much faster, and this is what people are saying. Including um, uh, sidekicks. Ah, oh, if if you didn't have creature mode, everything was fast. What? 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 We have noticed a difference that were more than notable. Uh, uh, no animation, creature mode on Flash is uh, it has to be faster because there's nothing happening in there. I want to repeat something that I have said in a previous live. There are some animations that are quite lengthy that break the game dynamic and stuff like that. Uh, let's, I'm thinking about the death of mobs, which really is breaking our heads. It slows down, it breaks the, dynam the dynamic of the game. We want the game to be as fluid as possible, but to have an, a zero animation mode is not something that we want. We will have to look at the stats, how it looks, what it gives, and uh, aside from the pew deaths, peewee deaths that is taking so long, it's disagreeable, we don't like it, we will do something about it. <laughs> so we will ameliorate and enhance that which is uh, enhanceable. And if we realize that some things are making fights twice as long as needed, uh, we will do something about it. Uh, this is not, yeah, we don't want to make your life harder by um, having things take longer. So when it comes to animation again, we had another thing. So there was the death, uh, and outside of the fight there was some animation like the uh, portals or turrets that were um, quite punchy, they were quite vibrant and alive. <laughs> For those we will reduce them so they're less, um, uh, less pronounced during the fight, let's say. Less present, less flagrant, less <laughs> ressortissant, let's, there's less of them. <laughs> and on the last point, the most important one about the animations was um, the idol, idol outside of the fight, the and inside the fight as well, the breathing stance and the fighting stance and the idol. So globally, outside of the fight, we need to calm it down a little bit because breathing while up is a bit weird. <laughs> that was a bit weird. We have listened to feedback on that. When it comes to the idol inside the fight, the idol boxer stance, we can reduce it a bit as well. The whack fu idol, we've seen you call it many times, kong fu idol, whack fu idol. <laughs> when it came to this, I've spoken to the animation team and it's something that we will do. We will go over and we will propose... Whoa, animation! Sta Whoa, by character, they will do it! And we'll go back over all characters and make one unique to the characters. Whoa! So we'll go back and reintegrate all of that. Something we will go over and work it. 
this is what we call RP, uh, outside of fight and inside of fight. So there will be idle uh, animations outside and inside for every class, but we really have to do some tests and run. Uh, we don't want to be too... Sp without getting into too much detail, it's, it's really complicated to find the right formula and needs a lot of testing. So now the transition of cycles between um, spells, states, and there's a lot. So what we really have, he's saying, what we really have to be wary of is not to break other things while adding things too quickly. And we have to be very careful about the transition. So the transition to be, to remain fluid as they are right now. So we will need, we might have to take some shortcuts initially and not test this very, very well, but it's important to push this so that we have answered the feedback and stuff like that. So we will have inside and outside unique idle animations for every single class. Okay, let's go. It's something that we'll start producing right now, starting from next week, we'll start testing. So we'll, uh, it, I can't give you a specific date, but it is happening in the next few weeks. I'm not telling you exactly when, but we, we are working on it. Sorry, I've done what we've done earlier. <laughs> the question I've started answering. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, they're putting back the animation when it starts when it's the start of your turn. Because we've noticed that you miss your turn because you don't know when it has started. So we will bring and we will bring back the notification that you've had. So it's something that we've removed last minute. It was a system that was developed uh, uh, back in the day, which was quite old and yeah, but it's something that is um, um, expected to arrive. It's, we're working on it and we want to work on the audio so that it matches the new quality that we have right now and, and then uh, launch it and release it for you guys to have and benefit. We talked about maps, animations, and now we have interfaces and artistic direction, the last two points. The most sp spiky and spicy. To let's talk. Let's end on the very good topics that you guys have liked so much. <laughs> so, oh, people are asking for artistic direction immediately. We don't want to talk about animations. Let's talk about artistic direction. Fuck it. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> oh, people have picked. Oh, okay. So you're, we're getting mixed signals here. Do you want the interfaces or the artistic direction? So in chat, they're getting uh, weird responses. They're juggling between the two. When it comes to the artistic direction, I want to differentiate two things. Which is the artistic direction of classes and objects. So we had uh, feedback on both of them. And uh, we received different feedback for the two of them, right? So. Uh, if I can allow myself to interrupt you, <laughs> not to say whatever, but here I know exactly what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> On the class artistic direction, right? So the characters, there's a lot of topics that were criticized on the forum that were criticized in the artistic direction. We've done a live about three weeks ago, maybe a month with, uh, with uh, Lohku and Laka, yeah. And uh, I'm forced to notice that we don't, we don't want to call in as politicians or liars, because I promise you that uh, the numbers are those, and Papino will share the numbers. There was a uh, poll, and it was about 70 to 75% that were happy with what we've showed you guys before the live. And we're not lying, we'll share the numbers. Yeah, liars. Like, I'm already being treated as a liar in chat. There you go. There you go. Done. <laughs> we have to be... Um, yeah, the, the results were shown on the PowerPoint. We showed a lot of things with them, like customization option and things like that, and that influenced your opinion on the poll back then. But now, if we did a poll right now, there will be a lot of people. I've seen, we can say it. We can, we've seen exclusively post for, forum posts absolutely negative about the artistic direction. And here I'm talking just about the character design. We had loads of feedback that came back that were different, whether it be uh, the lack of soul, the lack of life, the lack of differentiation between classes themselves, the feet, you guys are so strong, you've spotted that. <laughs> You're too good with humor and sarcasm that reading those posts was <laughs> more beyond feet. <laughs> there was a post by Nenuzuku, who took every character and 
rework the slots of colors and things like that was just a topic that i saw about the inner ipsa the panda which was really good on the forum really honestly thank you so much for those topics i know very well that um on this on this subject i don't remember the the pseudo uh, there was a post about an anutroph uh i can't remember the title exactly like an anutroph angry or something like that and here again i remember seeing it uh, back in the time, which was really, really, really good. Yes, but I can only join you when it comes to the feedback on the duration have not been good. I agree. Clearly, we've made some modifications. Otherwise, we would have been here if we didn't make the modifications. And really, we've made a... Um, uh, we've spoken to the team about the character design and we want to add differentiation points on different characters. So you can have more customization, more differentiation, between characters, sorry, differentiation, not customization. It's something that we will propose. <laughs> it's something that will evolve during the beta. <laughs> Horizons, what the fuck? <laughs> it's something that we're working on right now while it's still hot. And we will <laughs> we will propose some solutions next week. Subjects that you're trying to spam. No, Colibri, there is no... I have nothing against her. There is no idea of taking back an old employee or there were some very bad topics um, within the company. Uh, we don't want to go back. The things that she posted were nothing, we never asked for those. They were not done in the right conditions. And everything that was proposed from there was never something that we were able to integrate in the game to begin with. I have nothing personally against her. And when I arrived at Ankama, I've, I've known her very scarcely. I don't even spoke with her or something. But no, her uh, designs will not be integrated in the game. They will not be integrated in the game, which is... I just want to make it clear. It's not something that is integrable or we, that we will integrate in the game. End of the story. So we have a full-on team that is working on the character design, on the aesthetic direction. We have artists that are working on things. I've spoken to them just this after yesterday afternoon. And these are topics that we're talking about. These are uh, things that will propose some modifications during this beta. And things that we will better for you during this beta. This is what it's for. Uh, I did not I did not stutter. <laughs> but here we go. <laughs> so when it comes to the artistic dire direction, we've noticed a lack of differentiation between class, a lack of detail. Um, the fact is between many classes, the lack of humanity, so Sacria, Fekka and stuff like that. Uh, we have really hard time to differentiate human characters as opposed to Oginax and Eliotrops and things like that. But yeah, uh, even myself, I have given this feedback to the team whereby I said uh, uh, the Hopper Mage is, uh, I really can't differentiate these two. Can you please do something about it? Yeah, but it's something that we're working on, we're conscious of it, and we want to bring, we will rework them. And the big hats, we will get rid of them. We need to do a test, get rid of that nonsense, and we're going to redo them. We've seen a lot of returns on this thing. We've seen some um, uh, images and posts and stuff like that, detailing the proportion and things like that on the forum, on the Anutroph, on the IOP. Yeah, I'm not closed to, cl to, to, to redo all of this and solve all of these problems, yeah. So, to my, to my uh, knowledge, there is a uh, race against time, which means... Um, yeah, there was a race against time where that started where by the feedbacks that we knew about. We hadn't implemented them yet, but we have taken them into account. You know. So here, uh, items. I have the impression that there was a lot less criticism on items than uh, classes. I don't want to say that there was no negative feedback whatsoever about items. But here again, there were uh, the critiques that were uh, at the level of items were uh, the same around classes, whereby uh, they lost some... Uh, uh, soul, like Prespic lost its soul, uh, Moo Wolf and stuff like that. A lot of um, iconic items and classes and, and uh, sets that had lost their way. That were, yeah, that we didn't necessarily negotiate very well. Here, I want to specify. Uh, I tried to read as much as possible the feedback, the YouTube videos, the forum post. I watched lives as well. Ah. But principally, uh, I, I see, I read the bug part on the forum. Uh, oh, don't worry, the champion set, we will go back over it, don't worry about it, no, no, we'll fix that. <laughs> we will clearly do a new one as, as soon as possible. It's a topic that came back with the, um, the before after on the podium image that 
I don't have a list in my mind of all the things that we will change, but there will be a lot of items that will be completely redone and reworked. Right now, as Rebecca said, we don't have all the items. There were loads of items that were discovered, which was really cool. And then we go on press pick. Ah, oh, shit, it's a lot less. Toady. Ah? The toady that looks a bit big or too weird. The inky veil, you've told us about this. If, if, uh, if uh, we fixed it, but if there's still need to redo it, we will happily redo it. So, yeah, but the Inky Veil, uh, following the DL Live, uh, when we showed you the Inky Veil, we've, we've seen your feedback and we've immediately... <laughs> Before the live ended, he was in his office reworking it. Uh, so, reworking items is something that we will do and we will happily do as soon as you tell us because we it's so easy for us and we're happy to do that. Knowing very well that low-level items... Uh, we are knowing more about them because you're testing low level items right now but from the 10th of uh, September October you will be able to test your own accounts and you will see September yeah September and you will be able to test your own uh, high level items and then we will see what those look like and fix the ones that are ugly as shit <laughs> you'll have a different panel of uh, stuff to test and try this was all for the artistic direction do you still have anything else in mind that you feel we didn't cover on the artistic direction, not necessarily, but uh, there is a, an exercise of style that is happening, but there was one topic that I uh, wanted to go back on that I feel like we didn't drum enough on, uh, just because we lacked time and things like that, and I wanted to answer uh, questions myself, but there's one topic that we want to go back. The letter to Ankama. First of all, I want to thank the author of that forum post for taking so much time to to group everything on that topic, right? Knowing very well that that topic globally is... It's a conglomerate, it's a groupment. Do you think what I think, community says? By unity where we are? He took, every time, three, four questions from every topic. I will take three to four questions from every topic and I will answer all of them. The project has... I've picked up a for three to four months and I've I don't have the five years of unity in my head so I can answer every single point with great so I will I will solicit help and get the uh, proper returns to the topic so for me it looked important because I have answered some on the forum but not all of them and so I wanted to answer this topic in particular that keeps coming back which uh, summarizes the global problems that we have with the better, that you guys have with the better. So if we get bored or we have time, we'll go back over it later on. So the maps, we're just before talking about the interfaces and UI, I wanted to go back on the map, something, uh, uh, what are they called, the uh, markets, marketplaces, what the hell is the deal with the marketplace? <laughs> Should we give you a list of things that we're changing now? Should we show you that? Yeah, there's markets, a second, attempt to fix the uh, the squares that you can't click so invisible characters we have gone a big chunk of um, cells that were not clickable we fixed that now so the sale uh, in the markets there was a bug where if you selected many they would crash we fixed that one uh, inventory we fixed the filters the enter button in the market the market is solicited by price. When you come to buy, when you buy something, it's automatically removed. And side, we have filter by price of sale. And what, when you add characteristics on the interface, uh, there were some bugs that would happen when you enter and stuff would fix that. And the group of monsters visibility has been enhanced. The ca the challenge you don't have to click double click in order to be able to select. The cooperative crafts is functional now, back again. The full screen, you've talked about it. We fixed the problem that made the blurry when you go full screen. Uh, some identifying things have disappeared, like blood, I don't know what that means by that. Ah, oh, the ID, the IDs between parentheses are gone. Uh, the effects of objects that have date were now shown correctly. The interfaces work well, totally. Chat. Ah, you've broke our head with chat over the weekend. There were so many of us. 
we forgot a well, I don't know why, what's that thing HTML component and then it allowed you to do a lot of things with chat and play with it but we fixed that it allowed me to purge all the weirdos of the game holy shit guys you've spotted that so quickly the putting in sale from the market is fixed uh, yeah the resources are um, fixed by price average price the XP at the end, the um, sound, oh. getting the sound from um, multi-accounting, you now get proper audio from just the one account, one of the main accounts. We fixed animations on many cards, many characters. We, at the level of classes there were correctives like Forgelance, Ayop, Habermaid, Shram, Zellor, Uginag, Ekaflip, Rogue, Enutrof, Olza and Sadi. We fixed a lot of animations with these guys knowing very well that when it comes to the correctives on the first week we've done a beta every day. Now we're going more towards a maintenance on Tuesday afternoon and Thursday afternoon so double maintenance per week. <clears throat> they want to know more about the correctives so he's giving them more details. <laughs> We received a lot of feedback about the Forge Lawns. Nothing was going well with that class. <laughs> uh, stock. There were a lot of animations that were missing with IOPS. With uh, Distortion. There were some uh, cell. Yeah, so the runes for the Hopper Mage were not showing on the ground. The Zellor had a problem as well, the Uginak. Uh, we fixed some uh, Echo Flip FX. Oh, and this Foggernaut Scaphander spell. Oh my god, it wasn't very beautiful to see. <laughs> the Bomb Wall have their own. Yes, they have their own. Uh, they show well on the map. Sadida, we fixed the appearance of. Uh... Okay, so they fixed the summons faces and the Osa, the male Osa, has been fixed the face. So this was the first pass that we've done. Correctives for the first week it was quite big it's a big change log a lot of things were corrected that we that you will be able to test yourself for, for the this the next week we are going on a rhythm of two maintenance one on tuesday one on thursday so the first big changes that you can expect will happen on thursday because we're tuesday today makes sense <laughs> and that's it the other question before talking about the last topics about the UI, which well, let's talk about code again. What is the memory leak? Yes, <laughs> you're working on not one but two memory leaks. Explain those to us. <laughs> let's recontextualize what is a memory leak and what are you doing about it. So, concretely, it's when you don't release something from memory. When I say this, it seems easy, but right now there's two major memory leaks. The first one is on items in the inventory and banks. But not just in these two, it's every place where you have items. You risk to go up in RAM if you open it, close it, open it, close it. We're working on it, we've spotted this. It will happen very quickly, yeah. But we know that it exists, this is the first memory leak we've spotted that was the most consequent I think. And there's a second one, which was the comparative, when you're in the bashery, between the bashery and the inventory. So, here, uh, there are very high chances that we have a fix immediately for this. Normally, you shouldn't be able to go to 2.3, 2, 2 to 2.3 gigabytes. It's not normal that you go up to 3 or 4. Nobody tell him that I've reached 8.5. <laughs> uh, over the long term, it will not be the case anymore that you go up to 3 at all. Uh, there was um, some um, sprites with the Aneripsa, Sadi. We need to rework them. We didn't have enough time to work on them and go back. But we will do a good session of profiling in the game where we identify exactly what is happening. Is it from the spells? Is it from this? Is it from that? We need to properly diagnose and profile the cause of the issue. So, uh, markets, it wasn't possible at all. <laughs> we focused the markets, we fixed them. Sad the and certain things like that, and Foganaut. It will happen, but not immediately. We, we need to properly diagnose and work on it. But we want to work on markets that affects a lot more of you than just that. We couldn't leave that in that state in the game for you guys. So even if there are bugs that you think, uh, there are some bugs that are ultra, ultra important. There is a hierarchy. We try to prioritize them like chat and markets uh, because it blocks the experience of the game. I mean, just think about chat. It was extra plus plus in the importance role. <laughs> there were so many players that were impacted. So 
yeah, we try to prioritize. It's not to say that yours is less important, but it's the number of things that um, affect more people. Or again, if things that are quite easy to fix, we prioritize that as well. What we need to guys know, and you might suspect this, the uh, un unable to target the case. Yeah, so the inability to target a cell would happen over long sessions. So it's something that we do, uh, it's something that happens that is bad and it sticks around and gets worse over time. It's something that we've noticed. It, it's, it's been a while that we've had this issue, but we've never, we were never able to fix it. Uh, and even in the logs, when we check the logs, well, the moment a, car, a cell becomes untargetable, we have nothing to try and understand why is it that happening. The, even the logs do not show that it is happening. It, this was one of the biggest feedback that we received, but we're trying to track exactly where it comes from, but we don't know. So uh, summons, uh, invisibility, or uh, sort of tracks that we're exploring to see if that's what's the cause of it, but we don't know exactly what it is. It is a historical bug that we've had in Flash with summons and stuff, and we suspect it might be that, but we don't know. We still haven't put our finger on it, but we're trying to f find it. it. That one in particular is so annoying. Yeah, he's saying there's 50% chance that it's due to that. Uh, the roleplay, so he's saying that the game is lacking the ability to detect some cells because of roleplay or something, I don't know what he means, but... Ah, so... So, they're describing what a repo is. So when you have a bug, then you usually have a log that says you do this, you do this, you do this, and this. then the bug happens. So they're able to recreate it, retrace it. But when it comes to the cell that we're unable to click, there is no repo that they can generate because the logs do not show the source of it. So, uh, the invisible, invisible characters, like blobs and things like that, the problems that you were having, we fixed that. We know that it is fixed right now. Yeah, so yes, chat is picking up on this. Uh, we think that invisibility is the lead suspect cause that we think is causing that generally. Uh, we will try and fix it. If it doesn't work, uh, we will go and look for the next the next uh, clue because this will be the 19th or 20th thing that we're trying to see if it is the lead cause. I really hope it is. <laughs> and that was it for the explications, Kato. And I'm really hating myself right now because I said there were four modifications, but it was five. <laughs> Talking about interfaces. I want to talk very quickly about the sound aspect. So we've all, I would like to say that the overwhelming majority of feedback was positive about music and sound. In multi accounts, however, there was a superposition of sounds that was happening. So if you had multiple accounts open, you'd hear the sound all at once, which is weird. But we fixed that. So music and classes, there were still some sounds that still don't have any, they don't produce any sound that we need to go over and fix. But generally speaking, I would say that is one of the main problems that we've had with, uh, with the map animation. With the map animation, these were the two things that were the most positive things that we received. And now let's talk about the UI and interfaces. Ooh, Ooh we started with the laugh. <laughs> what shall we say about the UI and interfaces? Holy smokes. Right, we had loads of returns and feedback. Generally, there were there were two types of feedbacks, generally, I think. There, there were um, people who were bothered by all the interfaces. And there were some that had specific problems with certain interfaces. Let's try and evoke the two of them. So, from a point of view, a general UI interface, we had some strong elements that came back, which is... The, inf the important information does not pop up. How shall we say this? Uh, some of the most... So the, um, the spell, uh, the, the, the equipment tabs, uh, the spell reads, you know, the, the pods, the um, price and things that are put at the top, which are not as interesting as stats, and the stats themselves are not all weirdly laid out. So the most important elements are not popping off immediately. And uh, the other generic observation that we've had is the ease to read interfaces, generally speaking. The feedback that we've got is that uh, the font size uh, and also the fact that uh, there's too many things happening on interfaces that there's not enough contrast between certain elements. So you lose information and it's hard to see exactly what you want. Yeah, I think you've covered it pretty well. Navigation as well. Um, the things we had loads of feedback 
about they came from the fact that uh, they were bugged at the start that's first of all and in need of correctives but we've passed some of those and we're passing today uh, it didn't help us to really test the UI X I don't know what he means by that and I want to bounce on Eternaris who is the guy who posted uh, oh my god what a piece of work holy smokes and the unanimity in the comment section of that post just wow I'm thinking, hold on, hold on. I'm redoing the thing in my head, hold on. Hold on. All right, it's, he's thinking about how, what to say about it. Uh, people, a lot, a lot of people talked about the Majin interface. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's nothing, it's not a big deal, we will fix it. The snapping, uh, the, um, the snapping, so the uh, magnet stuff. The snapping of interfaces is uh, the, the distances between them and stuff like that. The magnetic nature of the snapping. Uh, we will fix that between tabs and stuff like that. It's no big deal. The auto placement, as we call it. So, when it comes to Eternaries, globally, what happened is I have his contact. We did a voice chat yesterday and we've exchanged about how it works on his side. The mindset that he had making that post. I don't want to make false promises. I'm not saying that we're immediately going to work with him or redo everything. But the fact of having a topic with such unanimous... Oh, I wasn't going to close my eyes and say, uh, no, we weren't going to look at that or anything. No, 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 no. We have his contact details. We did the voice chat, as I said yesterday, to talk about how can we put this in place for you guys. We will see. We will see. We will see. We want to see how we can evolve the interface. As uh, Ribek said, uh, there's the UX, the head, the uh, interface. Uh, this guy, this guy. I can't tell you um, that we're going to go back over the entire UX. But holy smokes, we're going to fix a lot of things. But... Clearly, I've answered your feedback about interfaces. It's impersonal. It doesn't look like Dofus. So again, we have the contact of Eternaris and we will get in touch with him and see how we can work with him and then negotiate some of the changes that will be coming to the interface. <laughs> Here I want to specify something. <laughs> what the? Papino said this. As a subtext in his, uh, on the various topics that we've mentioned during the DA, the animation, maps, and things like that, these are teams that are different. And uh, <clears throat> every team is working on the project. Every team is master of their own projects. So UI, UX, the interfaces. Once it was defined, you have to develop it and then integrate it in the game. So necessarily, between big printers, it works with the resolution of bugs because it's the same team that does the integration of anything that we work on and then resolution of bugs and then yeah we're looking at Koto right here oh my god December is not is not too far away <laughs> so we talk about prioritization even within bugs we have an effort of prioritizing that happens uh, so subjects of optimization memory leak performance we want to work on that as well so we have loads of Another big topic that we will introduce is the um, UI UX uh, changes. How are you? How do you know about nuggets? <laughs> right. I just wanted to specify this. As Papino said, uh, we can't really guarantee that we will do uh, tens of thousands of modifications because it is a team that is working on other projects at the same time. We have a team client that is present here. And here again, where we uh, got, uh, we try to do too much. This is why we ruin ourselves. We try to do too much at the same time. And so instead of blocking features and doing them over time and fixing them over time, we try to push everything at once and then fix everything at once. Yeah, but here is the same thing. We have an enormous number of modifications to bring you and we want to prioritize them and bring them in a certain order. Uh, we don't want to redo the entire interfaces and things like that in three weeks and then propose something new and then we go back on a live or another three weeks and have the same conversation and redo everything from scratch and stuff like that. 
as much as I like to do things twice, I don't think it's uh, not not up to, not to that point. So we talk about prioritization. The client team that is represented here by Koto is exclusively focused on the beta. They're not working on Flash. They're not working just on Unity. This is the point that I want to go back on right now. Clarification point. Uh, we talked about this with Koto. So five years of development in Unity. What you have to know is, it has been five years that we're talking about Unity. It is, no, we've not been developing Unity for five years. Uh, yeah, one of the first... Yeah, so Koto is one of the first developers that worked on Unity ever. And he's joined us three years ago. So it hasn't been, we haven't been working on it for five years. So during those three years, we have not not done anything on Flash. This is something I want you guys to keep in mind. We've evolved the game massively in Flash while having a developer working on Unity, while he's exclusively working on Unity and only has been doing that for three years. But we have been working on other things. And yes, I agree. The porting has been mentioned five years in 2019 by Tot. Yeah, I'm not gonna say otherwise. However, the point is that we have not done nothing. We've not been sat idly. We've uh, improved the Flash version quite a lot and working on the system. So I join you again in um, one of the things that have been... Um, yeah, one of the biggest pieces of feedback that I'm taking from uh, his video, from some video that he watched, is that the communication about Unity was completely ruined. It was balls up because we've sort of created the impression that we are working on this every day, we're bringing it, it's imminent, but it was not the case. We didn't communicate it properly and it has came back to bite us. So now I want to bring back the truth so we're on the same page. We haven't been working on it for five years. It's been five years that we're talking about it. We've announced that five years. Really, it was three to three years and a half that we've been working on it in a dev capacity, just so you give you some context. Again, I understand all the negative feedback that we've said. They're real, they're present. There's a lot of things that we've done bad, like the artistic direction, the interfaces, and the internaries that I really wish we would work with. There's a lot of things to ameliorate, to enhance, to better, but yeah. But yes. Post to say that we've been working on this for eight years and it's just, we don't even know where this number comes from. <laughs> Chad is asking when Dofus real engine. <laughs> Before we go to the Ankama letter, the thing that he mentioned earlier. The letter to Ankama. I wanted to end on two topics. To conclude on the interface, we talked about the modifications generally. <clears throat> there were some interfaces that generally speaking were told us about the characteristics, spells, info bubbles. Uh, these are some targeted UI that uh, have a problem with their functioning and things like that, and we are looking at them. The quests as well, yeah. And and chat, well, um, yeah, the dialogue bubbles with NPCs, yeah. The rewards, yes, that was the second topic I wanted to talk to you about. Oh, let's go. <laughs> Before we talk about the letter about the mobile porting, there was um, one that we've announced, but things that will happen later on that we didn't talk about. I want to show you the ornaments that we had previewed for the better. Just so I want to say, to, to my, in my opinion, it's worth it. I want, I want to see your uh, return. <laughs> we've, we don't want to hear, we've heard the feedback of uh, shameful, you only care about money, but now I want to show you some real things. It's a banger. I want to show you the ornaments, right? This is the ornament that you will get. This is the first ornament. Level one. F oh, three, not one. Oh my God. Bali, the, the third. Three out of four. So if you get to level 150 and reach the achievement, level 150 and 3,000 uh, achieve or 3,500 achieve points, correct me in chat if I'm wrong. And here is the 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 bit where Koto gives us the the side eyes. The last one will be the animated one, which we're, we're thinking about something. Yeah, we're thinking about something for the level 200 to be animated and stuff. For those of you guys, the guys, for those of you who have leveled professions, you guys are all the, all the G's, the top G's. <laughs> Big up to you, you're mad people, you're crazy. And the community does not even deserve you. I'm thinking about something to give you this ornament. I don't have the perfect formula, I'm still thinking about it. I want to do something for you. 
starting from which level and stuff like that. Some gathering professions level 200. Maybe we'll give them... And they will get the ornaments as well. So if you've leveled... Uh, if you want to get this and not uh, do the achievements and XP, you can just level a profession. Uh, so people who have done professions definitely deserve a little something like this. <laughs> as people are asking, I have three professions level 200. What do I get? It's like we can't make enough ornaments for all case scenarios. <laughs> But yeah, some, uh, so the, we will take into account the investment time required in order to achieve the level of the profession. So some gathering ones are harder to achieve than crafting ones and things like that. But we're thinking about something to bring to you. <laughs> this is for 150. Uh, well, let's close the parenthesis. We want to thank everyone that continues to play on the beta, the are raising the bugs despite the problems that you found despite the visuals the interfaces and all the things that you guys have encountered generally speaking it's a challenge for us to get players on the better not only to find the bugs but also to test the characters that we bring so we thank you so much for those of you who are continuing to play there uh, bring back stuff to us uh, don't hesitate to uh, try and find if there's a forum post identical to the one you want to make before you make a new one because you're just adding reading to me and I try and read all of them. <laughs> I'll let you talk right now. There was a letter to Ankema. So for those of you who have not read the post, I invite you to go on the forum and go to... <laughs> he's saying please don't give me any you know the big shots that they do fight sometimes <laughs> where you can only see him i don't want to to cry we don't want to make give the impression that we're giving an apology video <laughs> this is the post it's a letter that regrouped all of the opinions of the community uh oh, i'm seeing in the chat nuggets people are talking a lot about not i'll talk about it now because so it doesn't come back let's just get it all out of the way nuggets what we've done why are they at 250 per unit? We have taken the average rate on Dragon Mirrors right now, which is 250 actually. To reduce them, I'm not against that because 250 is a bit much. But the other thing is, we have to think about it. What? Okay. The ca it's okay, okay, okay. So it's a big problem that they're having with the pets mounts and uh, and mounts, and he's saying you can delock some. Uh, we can make them cheaper than you, but it's not gonna solve the problem for December for you. You will have the same exact problem. You will find yourself in December when the when the servers roll out. You will find yourself in the same position where you, it's they're hard to obtain. Making it easy on you right now during the beta will not solve the problem for you later on. But it doesn't mean that we shouldn't find a sort of compromise right now for you to test them. Uh, the Ah, yes, okay. So, we want to make it easier. We will renegotiate the price. We might lower it a little bit, but it's a beta. It's a rush. We want to keep it as close to reality as possible, but we need to stay and observe things as they are happening and collect as much data as possible. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, there's a lot to take into account in deciding to give you something for free just like that because we are looking to gather real data about a new server rush we don't want to distort the letter the results that we get by making this too accessible than normal or things like that and think mm. yeah so on mono account servers we have found that there were some issues with that, that appeared with the porting and the other one is the reset of setting oh yes yes please the reset of interface interfaces or settings let's go let's go there are some interfaces right now that they would reset uh, when there's a crash when you end the fight if there's an inactivity things like that right we'll talk about this with the koto letter now he's talking about the letter i've posted the link this is the letter to Ankama. somebody did the effort of collecting the top four most crucial 
points per issue that we have generally with stuff and they've grouped them in one mega letter the first big point is the mobile porting why do you want to port dofus on mobile and tablet who is the author of this idea and what the fuck are the arguments for this and he had a little laugh <laughs> And what happens with Office Search? It's a legitimate question. Why do you want to port this on? It has always been an idea. It was always a will for Office to be accessible on mobile, which led to Office Search a number of years ago. Yeah. Why do you want to port it on mobile and tablet? Globally, the will is simple. We want to follow the trend. Most games are going in this direction. You don't have a single launching of a game right now that doesn't have that kind of integration. Yeah, the Chinese games and all sorts of games that you think there's always some client side mobile wise. So we always had this well. Here, there's a point to make. We need to pay attention to this. I have seen many times the feedback of if there is a mobile port in, so everything. Uh, so everything that you're doing now is with that in mind. I'm talking about the artistic direction. I'm talking about the potential character looks and stuff like that. We've talked earlier with Koto about this. We don't want to propose a PC version that you don't like. So later on, we can have something good on mobile. We don't want to divide the community like that. We don't want to ruin the game like that. There is no willingness to ruin the game on PC like that. There's an incredible amount of work left to be done to bring a mobile version and last time I saw it was you that was working on app we want to what well, we tested to see if the connectivity is possible if it's feasible the mobile version is not not ready but it's not even in production it's always something that we're talking about I've done uh, I've had the conversation with Todd when can when he asked me why can we have this? I do not know when we have an enormous amount of work to do right now in order to go to mobile. But the objective is not to impoverish the PC offering, just to have. So in my opinion, it would harm the game a lot more to do that. And then, production side. If production wise, we just show you bad things. Uh, the Dofus Touch is a different team altogether. Dofus is not Dofus Search, it's a completely different touch. I'm a producer of Dofus and Dofus Retro, that's why I talk only about these things. But Dofus Search itself is a different team altogether. And the, the production, game development and stuff like that, we talk every now and then. Yes, there are some questions of cohabitation between the two. It's not evident, but uh, it's not all case. Uh, the porting is imminent, but we don't want it to have a negative impact on the final release. It's not our will, it's not what we want. I can, I'll, I'll read the questions again, one sec. The error is human, but the change always brings fright and scare. Listen to the, uh, li listen to the feedback. Can you please tell us what are your reactions, immediate reactions on this beta after hearing the backlash and stuff like that. We've lived it differently. From my own perspective, um, my reaction is the feedback that we've got. All the questions that were there, direction, question, mobile, stuff, from my side, one of the biggest frights I've had, I knew that with the better, we really are pulling the, um, the band-aid. We've been pushing it and avoiding it, but it was very important for us to just dive in, to get as much feedback as possible, to fix the... And here, there is a, a strong feeling of injustice on the feedback that we received were a lot uh, virulent. It was, they were quite, uh, I know it comes from a passion point of view. I want to remind you that the team is a bunch of human beings that are reading what you're writing. Really, the negative feedback, I'm hearing all of them, there's a lot of truth, but the attack, my God, the attacks on competence, on people, on teams, they were quite violent. And for me, what really happened is we had Twitter, that has landed on the forum, if I had to summarize it. It doesn't mean that the feedback are not legitimate. Yes, there's a lot of truth to them. There's a lot of valid points. There's a lot of things that are true. But damn. Like the interfaces, for example. We will work with the Eternaris who made the post to change them and stuff like that. But it was really of an unparalleled violence. And I've lived it poorly. And here again, 
I see a question in chat. Uh, wow, fuck. People are asking them, do you think it was justified right now in chat? And and he just answered with a laugh where he bought the line, wanted to cry, where he's saying, you're really testing our limits with questions like that and making us wonder if you are really good members of the community, generally speaking. And he reiterates that respect is uh, necessary and it needs to be upheld because at the end they're all working human beings and they're bringing us what we, we they want what we want here with uh, somebody's mentioned that unity there is no map by map anymore what we try to communicate what we try to share over the years is and people have heard left and right and stuff like that i had a little i was worried about the dissonance between what you guys are seeing on online and the expectations you build on that basis and what we wanted you to know and we wanted to communicate the real things that we're working on not what you guys are getting from and that's one of the things that really troubled Rebek. we keep a lot of positive stuff from uh, the server side the modifications we have done a, a live in february last february it wasn't easy for the server problems that we've had uh, might as well say now that the server team is much happier that we fixed a lot of <laughs> We have a lot of work for the next three months and uh, yeah, we'll clearly up for it and looking forward to it. Kuto. Generally speaking, we knew it wasn't gonna please everyone. Yeah, it was always gonna be the case. Yeah. Then, to continue on the mobile porting. In all honesty, Ah, there's a question. Is it unanimous within the team that mobile is the way to go? Nope, there is no unanimity because there are many topics that are not that don't make the unanimity of all teams. Yep. Whether it be all topic, if you take any topic that you pick, you will not find unanimity. We all have a vision of what we want the game to be and things like that. So we were never all okay with it. The when it comes to music, art, any sort of creative side, the moment you uh, exchange your views, there's disagreement. There are lots of points where we join each other, but uh, the mobile portion is not unanimous within the team and we're not all in agreement. Are there any members of staff that are reticent about this whole direction? Everybody understands. I would not employ the term reticent because everybody understands why we do what we do. Uh, to, my, to my knowledge, we don't have... Uh, there is no opposition. Uh, vigorous opposition. You might disagree with it, but it's fine. It's happening. There's nothing we can do about it. And yeah, so, so here's what we try to avoid and mention names and tell you exactly what is happening internally because we try and avoid the forum people, the Twitter people getting a hold of people and just targeting them particularly. Uh, we don't want to give pseudonyms and stuff like that, pseudos and stuff like that. We try and avoid. We are a team. We might have disagreements within the team, but we're not going to tell you who is not liking this and who is liking this so you can do something about it. We're not going to do that. <laughs> because we've seen some madness land on our forum and we're not going to tell you any more about that. We're just going <laughs> to... Uh... Oh... We are. We think there is a high turnover in the company. Did Unity contribute to this? Uh, is it technical problems? It's a big question. Ooh, mega question. Okay. Three years have passed. There was an enormous number of things that changed. For Unity to work well, maybe Koto can tell us more about it. Globally speaking, it's a port that is ambitious. It is a portion of an MMORPG that is that was on a technology that was quite... It wasn't the best choice, <laughs> even at the time it was logical. Uh, Tot and Cam had the options at the time, only the options at the time. It was not the best choice given the things that they had. But the portion is a massive technical challenge that we're working on, that we needed to break everything. We haven't left anything, we haven't kept anything. We have completely obliterated everything. So 20 years of code, uh, a lot of people internally do not know how it works and why it was coded that way and things like that. So there were a lot of technical challenges behind. Here, we have to show you this. The, ca the, the, the photo of uh, the mount with a character head was just crazy. So we had a lot of uh, 
a lot of things that were happening so. and then coach started sending us some crazy things that he found in the code but <laughs> Oh, the image that we saw from Colibri of a character head and the Gucci hat and some crazy things that were happening with code just because the tech is completely ruined and s screwy in the background. So we had to break absolutely everything. It was a massive project. <laughs> 20 years. Recoding 20 years of development. It's just insane. It's logical. It makes sense. We can't really realize the difficulty of the amount of work that was there. To, I'm gonna try and defend the teams a little bit. I've seen some comments that were saying, uh, <laughs> when it comes to the importance of this, you could have done it in a year. I want to tell you, it was more than a year and a half to two years. For the whole duration of a year to a year and a half, two years maybe, we have worked with a Unity uh, company, two, 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 two years and a half we've worked with the Unity company. We had uh, consultants and stuff like that. The, it was a big team and we've worked with them. It did not even last a full year of consulting. We've seen so many things, so many uh, silliness in the forum that we felt like we needed to put some contest back on the table you need to know about these things we need to understand there's two realities two points of view what you can see from there and what we can see in the background and stuff really the porting has been so difficult and tricky there are some things that have passed during this year for example yes uh it was co yeah we had covid that was a big thing that happened but it, they didn't use that as an excuse so we've encountered so many difficulties during these years so yeah, and one of the biggest difficulties you need to know about is we've worked for Flash on, on Flash during this entire time on the game development side. So it's a lot of time wasted not working on Unity because we've developed the game as well during this period. You've seen a lot of enhancements. As as Ribeck said, uh, the client, um, we've worked on the Unity client, but in the background while maintaining 2.0 as you know it. So th this was the principal problem and there were two things that were so the technical porting and on the other side we wanted to go back on some creative challenges like uh, the ability to change uh, fight maps, the ability to... Uh, there was some creativity... So, I don't know what he means by that, which made it really really complex. To my knowledge, as a from producer side, yeah, it's one of the things that w that has augmented the risks of the sport in generally speaking, redoing the maps and technical stuff. Like I want to bounce on two or three questions that I've seen. The question, why didn't we stay on Victoria in Flash? How do you think, do you think it's possible to have 50 characters in one map f on Flash? What, what do you think there is lag when there's 50 people in one map? It's because of that technology, that Victorial stuff. In Flash, if you zoom on your maps, there's not a single map that is clean, that, it, that I have a, a pixel that is out of place. Yes, we do have some loss with the Unity portal, but also, as I've said, also on the forum post, we have a uh, algorithm, compression algorithm that has changed over the last 10, 15 years. But beyond that, the Victorial is just impossible to work with right now. Uh, you can't have you can't have an MMORPG where you have a certain minimum that you're trying to avoid of numbers on the map, otherwise you have big lag and stuff like that. So this will interest a lot less people, but in effect, in reality, we had a Unity team and a Flash team. And progressively, the people that were Flash did some formation, some uh, certificates, some teaching and learning in order to segue and form part of Unity. So most of our developers <laughs> now are in Unity. <laughs> So whether it comes to a master's degree, certificates, professionals, it, it took time. So, but we're not very far off having a perfectly um, good development team. Yeah, yeah. We don't, I don't want to see that we're very low level down the chart of what we could be, but we're getting there. Uh, most of them, yeah, most of them, the, most of the devs that arrived to work in Akama came to work for Flash. So that's the qualification that we've hired for. And all of a sudden we're working on Unity, which is a different set of cons competencies. So uh, in terms of this, 
uh, we've evolved a lot as a team. And I've said that on the change log that I've posted today, uh, that we've worked on the, on the full week, the amount of changes that we've brought in one week, we could have never done on a flash for the same amount of time. Impossible. 42 correctives in one week. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we would have to do a lot of archaeology to find uh, anything quite similar. It's a joke. It's a French joke. We would have to do some digging. <laughs> Last question. Which is the question of the legitimacy of team. The various teams that have worked on Unity... Um, are they they are not like oh this is a good good question are they linked to the universe to its history the teams that are working on this stuff it's a big question that is reading we all have different levels of knowledge for those of you the ones that know the least amount or have played it very infrequently um most of us have twelve thousand hours of game most of us yeah out of the three of us Ah, uh, so the team that is working, the lead of the Unity developer has at least 12,000 play hours. Rebek is the one with the least amount of hours at 2,500. But most of the teams, uh, they all are in full knowledge of the lore, the tea, the play. They know the game. Uh, we had some community people that worked as well on some projects in Waves and stuff like that. <laughs> so it goes like... Uh, I don't have any guarantee that people who have worked, the team that we've hired to work on interfaces, we don't have any guarantee that they know the game and stuff like that. I wasn't here when Fix was working on the interfaces and stuff like that. I do not know the answers to that. I do not know. Uh, Koto, Koto size, Koto here. There were lots of losses on uh, some... Uh, when you're an expert in the game, you move faster. We've seen with Eternaris, for example, the interfaces that he proposed are much more connected to what, he, because he played thousands of hours already. So he knows what to expect, what works for the game, and he combined that with the technology that we have right now. So the interfaces, the idea was to propose something completely new, whether it worked, whether it didn't work. For the moment, we have to let the team the time to do the work and see what the results look like. People are slagging off Rebeck for having very little uh, play time. So he's like, "Okay, I'm, I'm gonna, and I'm gonna play some more." <laughs> he's level eighty-seven on Draconiris. If anybody wants to help me. <laughs> He doesn't even remember what class he played. Oh my god, this is bad. <laughs> this is the end on the mobile porting. Let's move on the artistic direction part one. Holy shit, I'm so tired already. I told you, we're gonna do this. We promised we're gonna do this, so we're fucking doing this. Let's go. Let's dive on. So, the artistic direction. I'm not gonna read the entire chapter and question. Uh... The artistic duration has not changed since 2021 with the surprise that you've proposed. What is this all about? What is this all about? So, um, for three years, you've showed us the 2021 uh, surprise. You've had a lot of backlash. You've done nothing about it. So this is the question that has been posed to him. So what has happened in the three years? I can't tell you right now. Because it's been... Oh, I've only recuperated the full project of Dofus only very recently, right? I've not been here for the full three years as a lead developer on the office, right? But, so I could not test the feedback. We have a lot of work to do. We've received a lot of feedback on that, clearly, and we will work on it. How do you explain the differences and also the low consideration point of view from the community? I don't know what he means by that. Hold on. Hold on. He was, uh, he was, uh... How do you explain? How do you explain that you have very low consideration of the feedback of the players? For me, from one side, um, the returns have always been seen and heard, but not necessarily applied in real life. I also need to say one thing. I know that there were some topics that have come back uh, with the character design for Dofus uh, Dungeon at the time? Oh, from Rumeau Le Rouge. 
you have to know that the question of the question that people ask, um, why is Rue Moulin Rouge not saying anything about what we have right now? Now he is working on the character design, <laughs> as I've told you. We we read questions that clearly show that you don't know what is happening. This was a good example. People are asking why is this guy not speaking about the character designs? Well, he's working on the team. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, we'll continue to work on this and better it. But in reality, there's a lot of things left to enhance when it comes to character design. And this was the third question. What happened to the 2018 works that were pushed to the side? Uh, do we still have any idea about the things that Rue Le Rouge was working on at the time? Not just him, there's many other teams in the team, of course. Uh, the artistic direction part two. Is it negative in the, um, the polls that you've done internally? Why have you not worked on the conclusion that you have pulled internally and through the forums and stuff like that? As we've said, polls from the earlier this year were quite different about what the better from the ones that we have now on the better why did we not communicate that it's a big uh l from our side big loss from answer uh, this is why we will do a poll in the very few weeks to come Manai is on it and we will get actual numbers we want to see quantity in order to determine in reality what you guys think about the portrait we want to see real numbers. so flash has changed over time as well you have to realize that but we want to do a poll to get quantity and see where we are exactly on different topics. Uh, another question here. What can we expect on this topic moving forward? So totally, the artistic design, character design, we are giving each other lots of feedback. There's a lot of things that we want to see evolve on the character design. We, we're not going to talk about anything in particular, but there are things that we will change for sure. So in in reality, you will see changes over the next few weeks on different characters, different designs. But we have to think about possibly communicate with you, get your feedback much frequently. Then we're really sorry to see that there was so much feedback, uh, like the post from Son Goku, that wasn't taken into account at the time. So, yeah, the, the post about the Enutroph, the old Enutroph that is dying. I'm one of the first ones to be saddened by this. We have shown you this during the artistic design. Uh, we had a lot more to do from that point of view. The feedback that we've got were on the basis of the information you had at the time. Now you have the better in your hands. So we understand that your opinions have changed. We will do another poll in order to get actual real numbers. So he's interrupting. Um, now you can think about your own your next sentence. Uh, the NPC reroll will not be active right now. When he will be activated, it will be the same one in Ancanum. Oh, well, if you're above level 20, you won't be able to change class. You'll be able to change class. So uh, you will have to wait for phase three. The NPC in Ancanum that lets you change is uh, inactive up to level 20, lets you change class. But phase three, it will come where you can change freely. Ooh, there's a question about the fixed skeletal body of characters that is similar. So we will make it so that there's a lot more customization on characters. But the unique skeletal body that we have now, um, it have been accused of everything. What you have to know is Flash. We were working on with skeletal body that were quite standard and uniform for all classes, right? It's not something that is completely new that we're bringing right now. So we are working so that there's more customization and personalization of things, but it's not the source of all problems of everything to do with artistic design and character design, <laughs> everything that you see or you feel like you've lost. So it's not the main culprit and the biggest responsible for everything wrong with uh, what you've f fed back to us. There will be a lot more a lot more work done on characters so that you have a lot more customization and uniqueness to be able to distinguish characters from each other and things like that. This is why... Uh, and the other point is the animations as well. I found that it's... Uh, we've talked about it a lot, but the idle stances, which are animations, waiting animations, so idle animations, uh-huh, they will also be reviewed so that there is unique um, 
between uh, oh yeah so there will be a sort of group of idols and stuff like that like the warriors this that so we want to be able to dif differentiate a hopper mage and a sacria for example we want it to be so easy to um to spot a subject about identification and the immersion in game the tastes are not subject to debate or discussion in an organic way without being able to explain Oh, so he's asking, do you think it's just the community being capricious and uh, naughty or is it a real need to have characters that we like to play with? So, we've gone back over this already, we've talked about we will implement some things so that you are able to have customizations when it comes to characters, uniqueness uh, and uh, ca a character animation that are specific to those but we really have priorities, so the true fair uh, is getting released soon, we need to work on that so there's a lot of research and development being done uh, and at the same time, it's something that we will start working, start next week. So we're able to produce it as well as other things. So it's something that is coming very, very shortly in the next few weeks. Do you have any other artistic design ideas to sort of remedy whatever is happening? No, this is why this is why the idea that we're working on is to enhance and better what we have now and then release I'm talking hypothetically here, but if we say we're in November or October and we're still on a feedback where 95% yes, they still don't like what we have, yeah, we will discuss, we will talk, we'll see how we can better it, we'll see how we can... This is the best bit for me right here. I think this live is finished. We can go or go. <laughs> but yeah. We will keep in touch with you. We want to see what you guys think about every uh, solution that we implement. Uh, I can't say that everything will change directly, but... And now there's a question about costumes. Surely there are some... Uh, some solutions to have costumes without destroying animations and things like that. 2024 of loss of tech, surely. Yes, it's a point that I've forgotten, but we've talked about it yesterday. And we will have to go back on the size of characters. So. There, was, there will be a big differentiation between characters. So the anotrophs are very likely to be smaller than what we have right now. The, some characters might grow, grow, grow bigger. So yeah, there will be another piece of work that will be done on characters and their design and stuff like that to give them back life. Let's go, let's fucking go. <laughs> ah, stay with us, Rebecca. he's falling asleep. <laughs> Mono account and multi account. Uh, I've taken note of this as well. <laughs> so, we've not been working on this for six years. But why, on six years of porting, you have not passed in priority the multi account prioritization and the optimization things that was so demanded and asked by the community? Why have you done that? What we have to know is, what you have to know is, I'm taking the answers that Logan was formulating back in the day. Unity, as, as a project in itself, was 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 designed so that uh, multi-accounting is better performant when it comes to um, the porting, right? The performance that we have now are not perfect, but we tried to pass some multi uh, uh, optimizations for multi-account, but we've removed them because they did more harm than good. <laughs> There's a lot of things yet to do for multi-accounting. The hero mode, as I've said before, it's something that is really coming, but very late, not immediately. For me, to be completely honest, it never was, it was always an idea that we've never really worked on very seriously and for the hero mode, I will, I, I've, I'm not gonna lie, uh, the uh, hero mode, I've pushed it on the team, we're in the R&D phase, uh, it's a big work, for those of you that, that don't know, it's globally, on one client, you can incarnate multiple classes, have a team, uh, have multiple accounts and level them all in a parallel way. Objectives, quests and stuff like that. It's something that exists already on uh, our game, Workflow. So as I said, uh, it was a bit weird. I was a bit weird on the team placing and imposing R&D to impose some uh, <laughs> some work to be done on this and get some advance. Yeah. But it's not without its own technical problems. So multi-accounting, it's not three... Ah, you, uh, ooh. What? 
The biggest problem that we have right now is we've done uh, research and development server side and it worked well. It went from, uh, uh, you know, what, what are they called? The uh, sidekicks to better things. But we will do another test about that. But really, server side, things that were put in place, we started to get something that we could work with. It was something, not even a concept idea. It's, we were just tinkering to see how far we could push it and see how it would. So client side, you needed, like work for the time, we need at least a year, a year and a half of proper development. In terms of projects, when you talk about one year, it could take less, but it's surely a lot. <laughs> yeah. For those of you who work in development, you know that when we say a year, it could very easily sleep, slip and double up and stuff like that when you start working on it. So, yeah, we say in development world, one equal two for years. So the hero op mode optimization, it's not that it's not really interesting, but in terms of time and scale, it wasn't a project that we wanted to push at the same time as Unity. So we've pushed it to the back, but we've prioritized ergonomical changes. So we've, mon we've mentioned that at the live at the start of the beta, where we prefer to pass some uh, auto follow, for example, at the group size, auto join on the if you're in the same group and you're in the same map and that setting is activated, then everybody just joins the same fight automatically. And the last point is um, organizer is used a lot. We know it. We know it. <laughs> if we could manage to put an organizer baked into the launcher, I think that would be a big win. And we've, we've gone on this direction right now. The base optimizations would be much better if we've produced them and we've brought them to you. So just the auto follow and auto join if as a multi-accounter, and me myself, I would be so happy to have just those, just those two things. <laughs> so yeah, it's something that we are working on. I'm not going to ask Koto to develop this for me as a matter of priority. It's something that will arrive. I would love to be able to propose October as a date. But we're working on this for it to be at that sort of... Uh, there's a lot to say. Have you proposed some um, some solutions that could be implemented uh, as an alternative, for, like a multi-account, multi-account uh, su subscription, mono-account subscription, and things like that? No, I want I want to work the feature, put it in place, make sure that it is good before I try to think about how to make you pay for it. So all questions about uh, subscriptions, uh, pricing models, I don't even think about stuff like that, right? <laughs> I don't have time to think about things like that. I'm thinking about bringing you an actual valid uh, solution, first of all, and then we think about the other <laughs> things come. <laughs> He's reading the question again at 17 times the normal human speed. <laughs> I'm a multi-account player. I have my own team. I have a team that exists since 2009, 2008, 2009, something around that. I don't want to lose it. Dofus is multi-accounting. I don't want to lose this feature. It's important. It's central. It's a habit of players. The mode of mono accounting has brought is because it's more logical for some people that like to consume the game that way. But Dofus in its heart, it's a multi-account thing. Yeah. Yeah, it has its own central place in the game. It's really important. Classical servers for me are primordial in terms of importance. We're not going to neglect multi-accounting or mono-accounting. That's not going to happen. We want to treat both of them as equal because they both have. I know there's always a war between multi and mono. Everybody has their life. Everybody plays the way they find it interesting and will cater to both of them. Yeah, if you want to continue playing multi, that's important to you. We will continue to look after that. And same for mono accounting. No one is better than the other. I myself has long dreamed as a, an, as a teenager to have solo mo solo dofus. It would work very well, but yeah, yeah. A lot of us dreamed of having dofus on our PC without server or anything like that. But yeah, I'm a multi accounter at heart, and I understand the expectations very well. And it's something that keeps coming back. Uh, as a question, um, we really have, t 
to have an experience as a multi-accounter to understand the problems of switching screens and all the problems that they face. So it's not the experience of playing multi-account and do alt escape for five hours in a row. Oh yes, and make sure that your mouse does not change pixels so you can get the same the same answer for all the cat oh my god. You have to have experienced this to know the frustrations and difficulties and things like that. So I assume it fully. The multi-account has not been a hundred percent of the heart of Unity. The principal central thing for Unity is to have good performance on one client and make sure that it's fluid and stable. This has been the biggest priority for Unity and this is why we're playing catch up with multi-accounting. We always have things in mind. We want to bring a lot of optimizations, uh, ergonomical changes and stuff like that. So, La Compo, he, the people are asking him about his uh, composition multi -tube. Me, the cross, I don't like. That's it. The live is finished. I don't like Papino. <laughs> Friendship over. Rebek is my new best friend now. <laughs> no, no, I adapt very well. It's fun. Rebek plays Foganaut, by the way. The best class is always Sakri. There is no Sakri revamp. I'd love for there to be one. But, uh, yeah, my class remains Sakri and I'll never play anything other than that. Yeah. So... Uh, the, the fights and the instance maps. Why have you brought this changed? And this new system of fighting, is it totally linked to the mobile thing? That's why you have five fixed maps? To my knowledge, again, I say here, to my knowledge, because for the project, I haven't been in charge for years and years. It's been on the work for three and a half years and I've only taken it earlier this year. So the real re reason for instance maps is more production size uh, to avoid having to do every single map on a semi-tactical mode and I'm just looking at the scale of the maps that there are about 15 and a half times. he's seen uh, some comments calling him a dictator <laughs> to redo 13,000 maps because we already have 2,000 worked on the idea of working 13 extra thousand maps before giving you unity was unthinkable it's a lot of resources that will be dedicated to something that we don't need to work on right now in order to bring something better. So the porting of 129 to 2.0, there was so less maps back in the day. So 15 years of development in the game brought back a lot more content that needs to be reworked in order to make this uh, porting possible. So the loss of immersion, I understand it. I understand it. When you start a fight on a map and you all of a sudden somewhere else, I understand it completely. The agreeable, the to be able to test the better and stuff like that it is enjoyable. It is really cool. I find that is it plays well. We've got loads of feedback, but not, not everyone is in agreement. Yes, I give you that. But most people seem to think it's a, it's a really big hit, big hit. And I go directly on the second point: the immersion and small size of maps. This is really in the question. Here again, it's the point that we will work on. We will propose some enhancements, some betterments. We want to change some things. There are some maps on which the uh, level designers are going back. They're reworking them. The level designers, sorry. Uh, they're reworking them because there are uh, too many blocks. Some stuff that blocks your line of sight, obstacles and stuff like that. Don't worry about it. We will work those out like bosses. We will sort it out. But again, yes, there's balancing that needs to be passed on some certain maps to make sure that they port very well. The high level needs bigger maps. Of course we do. Even as a player, typical player, close combat, I still need to take it easy and I don't want all the mobs on me turn two. <laughs> yes. So these are things that will get enhanced and bettered with the better. We need feedback, as I say, as I keep saying, we need your feedback on what is happening. Um, there's also something that happened in the past. There were two big problematics. First of all, the map on you were, if you needed to do a quest fight, the design had to follow. And the other thing is the tactical mode that was just too ugly. Uh, the advantage of having this instance map is we could really have a gameplay that is adapted without having to do the role play map that goes with it. And the other thing is it, it made the balancing so much easier for us. So it's development side.
Ah, oh, he's talking about maps where uh, a big map and you had Ilya that would put three portals across the map and then and then they would just move between sides of the map and then brain the, the boss and it's a kind of abuse that we wanted to remedy in a way. So everything is a question of time, money and availability. But clearly the maps, the fight maps, they bring a real fluidity to the game that makes it more enjoyable. We don't have the perfect formula yet, but there are still a lot of enhancements and things that we will bring. The level designers are working on it. The set, the dead cells that you can't click, so they're less. The dead cells, uh, so there's less of them. Uh, a sort of reworking of uh, progression from slow level maps to big level maps. But clearly, the problems that we've had really on the feedback that we've got on fight maps. It very quickly went from a critical, there's a problem, to an alarm, raise the alarm. We have three months and a half, four months of beta. We can change a lot of things. We can fix, we can change, we can enhance. You haven't given us the chance to get the feedback and do something about it. You went straight for the alarm bells. and <laughs> So, yes, we can do a lot of modifications. We can bring a lot of enhancements. Just give us some. What I find interesting in these questions, Rebecca Sena, on the post, I can't remember which one exactly the name of the author but he's saying point a and in every point he has multiple questions and notably on the maps he said are you aware that we don't like them and then that they are difficult so we had feedback that the two things are difficult there's two problems here in this question so whether you like the map and the system of the functionality of the map is it big enough we would need to marry the two but we're working on everyone individually and i'm going to use the term again this is why I was saying earlier that we had mixed feedback on the map fight because some people were I hope I'm not going to offend someone but some people they mix between things the uh, the whole change is ugly because the maps are small so there's two things to differentiate there the functionality of the map the size the meta that it can create and also the map itself the beauty of it and the dead cells and the working of the map. So there's two things to differentiate there, and we don't want you confounding the two things. So it's a discussion that won't be easy to handle, but we were having it. So when it comes to fluidity inside the fight, it's one of the most principal points that we need to be vigilant on for Unity. Have you thought about working on... Oh, giving us the option to cut animations and chain spells very fast with or without creature mode so our principal focus right now is to ameliorate and enhance what we have so with animations that fights go very quickly and that's the principal thing that we want to achieve so even the fact that we know a class that farms enormously and really likes to be played opt in an optimized manner generally speaking even a player like that had feedback positive returns like that so Feka is a player yeah uh, there are things to enhance the uh, the death of uh, monsters and things like that. The image I shared on Discord earlier, he made it. The speed, he calculated the speed of every turn and so yeah. So there's animations of some class that needs to be reworked. The death of the monsters that is still bugging us and takes a lot of time. But we want to principally ameliorate all of this before we talk about a no animation mode. If after we make all these changes you still think it's necessary, then we might have that discussion. But give us the chance before we... So I've said this, uh, in before the release of the beta, if you find spells that are taking too long to release, some monsters that are taking time to play, don't hesitate to give us that feedback so we can take it into account and fix it to ameliorate the dynamic and fluidity of the fight itself. Just tell us. Why have you proposed one posture of fight in uh, for all characters is it an aesthetic thing or is it something that you expect to bring in the future and here again and here where we go in the machiavellic side or will they be paid think will it be will we have a basic stance and then you have to pay to have customization <laughs> as i said it's not a feature that we have planned to develop at the future i have absolutely no idea to give you some ugly stuff to oblige you to pay is not in our objective. It's not how we think. <laughs> it's not something we wish to bring. But to have one posture for all characters in fight is principally coming from a technical limitation that sort of was imposed on us so that old 
so all the, the spell animation and transitions bring back to the same stunt so that everything is fluid all classes flu flow and the animations and transitions all flow so it was a technical limitation really as I said earlier we will add some animations and stances and stuff like that we will add them outside inside and it will not be a paid feature we will bring customization per character and it's coming so um, if in the future we propose some crazy animations that do fabulous stuff we might I'm not saying no but we might bring them as a paid thing but to my knowledge and in things that I know right now about the game and the direction is taken we're not working with that in mind I can't say no forever about that but I know that you will bring this clip in two years and you'll tell me see you said that this was never gonna be a paid feature here but right now we are hoping to add more things as a base in the game rather than uh, in a few years make you pay for them we don't know what will happen in the future but in any way last tactical mode do you propose or do you think or consider bringing us the old tactical mode that is dark and gray and stuff like that we want to see it no people are saying thank you for fixing the market it has been fixed yeah there's likely to be bugs so don't don't cry victory early so the complete tactical mode, dark and stuff like that, it's not something that we want to bring at all. Again, we don't want to see never, but if it's something that after balancing everything and enhancing everything, will still feel the need. It hasn't been months that you've had this uh, new mode uh, at hand. So if something that keeps coming back, we could work on it, enhance it better, but it's not something that is in our priority list at all at the moment. Technically, there's three parts, so we're nearly done. The interfaces UI and UX. Why Or these interfaces like this? Did the design of them, was it informed by mobile? No, as we said earlier, absolutely not. Because we will have to redo everything when it comes to mobile, right? It's not because we have a port, mobile port in that we've decided on this UI and UX. Really, we will have to redo them all, so we, we wouldn't have done that. So really, it's not that that has motivated. So we've worked with an external company. We wanted to bring something that sort of flows from the office too, but it didn't work well, as you can clearly tell. <laughs> so these uh, interfaces, were they sufficiently tested internally before you released them? So this is what we said earlier. There were loads of tests that worked on pure functionality, but not long-term testing. So there's a big test thing between verify is the bug, was it fixed? Yes, it has been fixed. Then to do a three or four hour gameplay and see how it handles it, how it evolves and stuff. So yeah, the bug has been fixed, yes, but it can have some uh, secondary effects, side effects on other things, other platforms. So now that you guys are tested, we can't say that we have tested it for long periods of time, but now that you have the client in your hands and you're doing the test, we are finding out more and more about the other issues. But we have done some feasibility tests to begin with. Yeah, he's going to read the question. After six years of working, he's saying, I know it's wrong. We've established that it was wrong. The number is completely false, but I'll read it still. So do you have other reserve interface looks in reserve? And <laughs> what are you going to do about it? But as I said, I've gotten the contact of Eternaris who made that post, that beautiful post and big, big post on how the interfaces should look like and stuff like that. And we'll see if we can work with him to enhance everything for you. The problem of immersion. On top of the NPC dialogues, the size, the design, everything that we've talked about, the NPC stuff, it just does not flow. It doesn't work. So when it comes to quests, there's an anecdote I need to share with you. The older, the elder ones of you know already. The problem with NPC illustrations that were available, they were not really illustrations. They were the NPCs themselves that were present. <laughs> what? <laughs> now that we have animated NPCs and stuff, so the animated images were also animated in the interface, which was hilarious, but weird, very weird. Yeah. Uh, we had to remove them because at the time, which means... In one interface, you had an animated NPC, and the other one, no, it was, it was just weird, and it was just complete craziness and madness. <laughs> so yeah, we've noticed the problems with it. But no. 
So it's something that we have started putting in place. Uh, they're talking about the equesting, the early pick. So it was a picto that was added on uh, the NPC dialogue to, to just tell you whether there was going to be a fight or not. Or it was just conversation. It's something that we have just put in place. We will have to better it. And we will continue to work questing and NPC. Uh, questing in general is something that we will rework because we're very conscious that a lot of you are using uh, new applications that have just emerged like uh, Magem and Ganymede. Uh, pretty much all of us use uh, Dofus Polonu. So we are conscious that you're using sort of third party tools to aid your questing. And we keep that in mind. So there are things that we need to enhance internally, it's clear, but we have we have to we don't have the perfect formula, but we know what needs to be done. Yeah, we find it really cool that Majam and everybody using third party apps and stuff like that. Use whatever enhances the game for you right now if it allows you to have a better time in the game. But we are thinking of how to better it. Don't hesitate to use stuff like that. It's yeah, it's something that the community that picks up the slack of things that we haven't managed to get well in the game and that's a clear example so the last question about bugs do you think you'll be able to correct the reset the interface reset yes <laughs> he's working on it <laughs> give us a week give us a week give us a week please uh, we need to rest a bit it's been a brutal week we are on it as a team we're on it Oh, the, the question is, will there be an import export option? Yes, they are going to bring it. So you can import or export settings across multiple accounts. There's so many priorities with the beta that we just forgot to activate this functionality, but it's already there. Oh, we've worked on it. Holy smokes. It is, it is in the works. It is in the works. We're working on it. As Koto said, it's the button is in the interface. If you go up and there, you have the button to, it's grayed out, but it's there. So you should be able to import and export your settings internally. We, ha we are still working on it. But as we said, with the beta, there's so many returns and we need to prioritize. And in this effort of prioritization, there are some things that will go first. Oh, API question. Will you give us a possibility that some stuff that we've been asking in the community to allow us to enrich the game by making stuff and having access to API. I've discussed this multiple times, two or three weeks with Cam, one of the owners. It's something that's really complex to put, not, not to put in place as much, but as it's really difficult to maintain over the long term, to have stable APIs. These are things that are hungry in terms of time to, de to develop it, put it in place, make sure it's safe and stuff like that. It's really advanced stuff and we, Want to propose it to you, but not actually. We don't have the capacity to bring this to you right now as it stands because it's so energy and time consuming. And, well, you know, API. Uh, uh, Gluto will pick that question of what an API is. We want to talk about um, a few months, a few... Uh, it's a monstrous project and we don't want to get it wrong. We don't want in a few months for it to present some security problems and stuff like that. It's something that, yes, we will, we are working on. We want to bring it to you, but it's super time consuming and stuff like that. So are you going to bring us eh? some stats? What is he talking about? He's not sure what the question is talking about, but they mentioned win rate and stuff like that in PVP stats and stuff like that. He's not aware of something like that that is coming. Oh, something that comes from League of Legends and stuff like that. Some stats. Or PGG. I don't know what that means. Or PGG. I don't know what that means. So it's the sort of data they're asking for. Could we have more in-depth data about fights and stuff like that? Uh, no, we don't have anything in that sense. Uh, we have added on the last, you know, the endgame fight uh, view. We've enriched it. It contains a lot more stats and data, stuff like that. But we won't, we're not working on anything like uh, OPGG. Are you aware of quest translation is expected? Uh, the animation and stuff like that is expected a lot by a lot of us. <laughs> just the principal quest, it's humongous. It's not just one principal case. It's not 1,000 words. It's, it's, it's massive. It's a big, big uh, project. And um, 
I think there was a video echo, put a video up. I can't remember what it's called. He's looking for the video. Voice of Crossmoss or something like that. He's talking about a specific video that has uh, addressed this. The, the voice is too up. It was really cool. It gives you the willingness, it gives us the willingness to work on something like that. But it's a topic that is so heavy, that is so big, that we can't just in two months uh, dub all the animations and stuff like that and just bring it to you. It's it's not in, yeah, yeah, it's not in the works. I'd really love to do it, but it's not in any sort of production phase. Uh, yeah, but it's something that we will want to do over the long term. It's something that will happen with the Unity release and over the next year. Uh, the question here is about fan projects. It's not previews. It's not. It's not. There's no budget for it. It's not for the year, and not only in terms of time, but it's a big project. And typically, uh, we don't have anything planned for this. But even in terms of budget, it's not a little thing. The dubbing of a game, of as big as Dofus, that is twenty years of age. Oh my god. <laughs> If we dub everything, it would be so cool. Yeah, but just think about the size of the client as it is when the Unity client releases. We'll talk about maybe 150 gigabytes. This is what the kind of size of project we're talking about. 20 years of content dubbed up. It will be a huge client to download, 150 gigs. What are the modifications and stuff like that? What can we expect in game specifically? Is this better? Are there any features, systems that you're hiding from us? Or can we expect to see everything in the beta? Or do we have any features that we can expect to see? Yes. So there are features that are outside of the beta. So there's the interface of optimization of uh, Haven bags. Here we have to finish it within three weeks. So uh, uh, the uh, cosmetics for uh, a pet's mount and uh, mounts. So there's a lot of features in game that we need to finish and test, but content, uh, oh, unique content. I prefer to say, for exclusive unique content, we've always announced it was the game as it is that you will have to test. There will not be any sort of new content uh, specifically for the, with the exception of the gladiator rule while you will have precise things with the September update. That is the only exception that will be there during the beta, where you will, um, in September, with the Gladiatorial release, you will have a new sort of... It's something very specific for this update, for this revamp of this area. There will potentially be some features, some content to test at the end of October, November, if there are new things for this summer. But it would be for December. There there's not new content they will be able to test for uh, 2025 stuff. No, you won't. The game, it's the most important for us is that the game is good quality for December. It has to remain my priority. And I prefer that you keep that in mind for there not to be any disappointments or unmet expectations. On this, we will end this reading of this massive letter. I'm really sorry if it took too much time, but I wanted to do this because it's supposed to group a lot of things i'm really sorry again that it took so long it was a bit fastidious but it was important for me to go over the concentrate of all of your concerns from this one post on top of everything that we've discussed and talked about so the pack hd pack yes <laughs> well we move this laptop so there's no distraction the hd pack again right now le lac who is the lead developer is running tests right now to see if you can bring it. So the problem, just to give you some context about the problems with the pack, the HD pack is the necessity to have assets that are higher quality of the environment so that when you zoom in, it's not foggy or it's not blurry, nothing is like that. The thing is, it needs source files. We've worked as we've worked on the past. So there was a time where the maps were literally just one big uh, PNG. There were no pictures, it wasn't cut. So reworking this, with all the production methods that we have will be hell because now the map are so well cut, they're clean, they're well, well designed. Now we have a big project. It's not going to... 
it's not gonna seem much to you, but we were missing uh, 15 to 20 percent. So we need to rework, to recut, re upscale in terms of quality. Yeah. So it's a beautiful uh, topic. It's something that we want to propose during the beta, ideally. It might be a bit complicated, but that's the ideal that we're working towards. Uh, this is the objective that we have for December. It remains a big, big topic. The, our production methods have evolved. The things that we had back in the day and what we are using right now has evolved so much. And as we said, 5 to 20% of the side of the map. We're still talking about tens of thousands. Of, it's, it's just too much. It's just too much. The HD pack, we wanted to bring it. And here again, it will be something for Koto and client size uh, side team. Yeah, the the loading of the maps might be affected by this, but again, yeah, yeah. We need to work on the optimization of loading a higher quality map and stuff like that. So there's work to be done, not just in bringing higher quality stuff, but making sure that it meshes well with everything that you guys are using. Are we going to get gigabytes added on the side of it? I don't know, but it remains to be seen. It is something that, yes, the HD pack is important. We are working on it. We want to bring it to you. I have an anecdote on this. I, I love myself because it's hilarious. <laughs> it was the same, uh, like the class size, the class head. When we uh, filtered the uh, images, there were certain maps where there's beautiful environment and stuff like that. We want it so that they're big toes uh, that the level designers split. So we want a big image with stuff inside of it. Everything is already done. So in the files we have found, I can't remember in which in which dungeon, I think it was uh, Lushuk or something like that. There was a decor, it was a screenshot, and the screenshot that was taken at the time was literally print screen where we could see the, the, the title. So if you unzoomed on the file, you could see the location of it from the Windows screenshot. <laughs> it was hilarious because you can see the file location and stuff like that. I'm not surprised because I've, I've asked uh, Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins? That is a level design that works for us. Uh, can you tell us what you've been working on? Why is it all blurry and stuff like that? So at the time, it was just uh, PNGs. What? The thing is, what you need to know is, Frygos, for example, they've worked on it 17 years ago. 17 years ago, you had less te technology to share your file and stuff like that. And they were working on Flash as well, which was a horrible technology, generally speaking. So the performance on the PCs they had at the time were terrible. And level design side, what was happening is it was easier to, oh, to, to just share big images modify, code, add it, than it was to cut bits and rework them. So Frygost at the time was done where passing times was easier than passing assets and working them. So yeah, yeah, we're going very far. Yeah, the loss of quality in the share every time the share happens is just horrible. The definition were lost and yeah, so this is what we're working with right now, but we will rework them. So there was specific maps that were having issues loading He's naming the positions of the map that were problematic that people have raised. Loading problems. When you go into these maps, it... the bot question, as I've said before. Right now, I'm not going to cray hooray, but we don't have any on the beta. Already good. We know that there's a crazy... There's a crazy amount of difficulty to bring the bots, the current state of the bots, to bring them to Unity. It's going to be really hard for them to code the same bots and bring them on Unity. So one thing that we need to start, uh, we need to work to, to, to uh, fend off is multi-accounting coming into mono-accounting. It's something that is concerning us that we want to work on. There's a lot of bots right now on Flash that not only don't work well, but some messages that were exchanged. There's... Yeah, there's, there's a bit of hopelessness that we are seeing uh, get installed at their side. Wacky. He's been very cryptic about the whole thing. So can't say too much detail, as you know. Chat is... Uh, chat is slagging them off about bots. <laughs> They're trying to pick questions from chat. Is there anything interesting? 
Uh, Meijin is coming very soon, the rework of the interface and stuff like that. We've already mentioned that. Organizer, 100% non-ban. Can you not get banned for organizer? Here, we have to make a big distinction, as it stands. We have a degree of tolerance on organizer, because yes, we haven't provided any optimization, multi-account optimization. Yes, we are having to use. It's at your risk and peril. If there's any data leak and they take your logs from organizer, you're on your own. You can't guarantee good functioning on organizer. It's a really difficult thing to get right. The use of macros that allows you to gain advantage on the game is always a bannable offense. I've always seen players recently saying, why did I take a definitive bath? I just wanted to move all of my characters in 0.5 seconds without changing any of the screen. Definitive ban. Using a third party uh, like a macro just to give yourself advantage in the game, this will always be a bannable offense. End of the story. I want you to know this. I'm clarifying this. Clarify uh, the organizer, there's a certain degree of tolerance because it allows you to change things much. But. Uh, as long as it saves you doing alt escape for five hours on eight accounts, yes, we tolerate that. But to move eight accounts with one click, with 0.5 seconds, without even changing screens, uh, it will never be a question. There will never be any tolerance at this level. It will always be a perfectly bannable offense. Monster animations. Yes, yeah, so we've seen this return be made a lot. The characters are animated, the maps are animated, and the monsters are just sat there like lemons. <laughs> it's one of uh, it's one of the problems that comes with having such a massive bestiary. It's something that we want to pass over. We want to go and look. We want, first of all, to give idols. That is more important for me, that you have idols and fights inside the class, inside the fights, outside the fights before we even look at monsters. It's a big project, we're not even gonna look at it right now. We want to give you good characters, good maps. We want to make classes more customized, uh, their idols, their stances, everything about them. That is our top priority right now. The chat is fast moving. <laughs> Have we talked about the artistic design? Yes. For all of you that are just arriving and asking general question, we have we have mentioned a lot of things for the two hours. There will be re rediffs. Uh, the forum side, it's going to react a lot towards what we've done. I've seen a little message. One map equal one scene? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> So different phases, it's something that we would have loved to have brought you from the beta launch, but sadly, as I said earlier, there were some features, some interfaces, some um, are being worked internally, like cosmetics are part of this, uh, the face customization, a lot of work needs to be done before we can finally propose that to you as a final definitive product. It's one of our regrets. A lot of things we've shown you in the artistic design lives we weren't able to just propose on day one and I've noticed this certainly. Yeah. Yeah. We wanted to bring these options, yeah, there was a lot, a big lack we've noticed, but yeah, it's one of our biggest regrets. We are going to do something about it. Or, uh, oh, system of history of sales. Yes, yes, it's something that is supposed to be here, but it's just a bug. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You will have it, Mr. Is it possible to change class? We've answered with Rebecca. It's something that will be possible uh, on the third phase, but not on the first one. Will we keep the characters after the beta? No. I invite you all, if you have this type of questions, to reread the news of the release of the Unity beta, where we've answered a lot of these questions. No, the characters actually, as they stand, will not be kept. They will all be wiped. For the simple reason that it's a beta, it's not a temporis, it's not something that we want to keep. It's there to test the Unity release, yeah. That's one of the objectives that were clearly stated, and we're not going to change our minds on that now. A minimal mode instead of creature mode? Is that something that you work on? It's something, a question that we need to think about client size, select client side, to... <sighs> we will have to see what, what has to go. Do we remove animations and skins or 
necessarily, if you remove all these things, the game will be even more fluid, but we don't want that. <laughs> a minimal mode, why not? But why not is the question that I ask myself, why not? I have a question for you guys. There is a point that we didn't have any feedback on. The fact that we show you sync in Majin. It's something that I was expecting mega return. Bloody return. Uh, polarized return. I've not heard a single peep about it. It just passed by. Okay. Chat chat is saying yeah, we like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Big appreciate, big appreciate, big appreciate. <laughs> it was my tip. <laughs> it was an internal joke. 95.5 is a, a split that we're waiting. And now they were just making jokes about the, the words that they were using, like mitigated returns, mixed returns. <laughs> oh. So we're Unity without have all the problems that we have, but it's something that we'll bring. I don't know what he's answering here. Yes, now we have lots of bugs to propose and solve. Yeah, but we'll be more reactive on the development of new features, little things that were asked, some things that were flash were just simply un impossible. Like uh, just little, little modifications on flash would take about two weeks easily. Yeah, 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 I'm not even exaggerating. When it was a small feature for flash, it was two to three days. When it's small, I'm not gonna say 10 minutes, but it's, yeah, it's one to two hours problem solved in Unity yeah. in Flash. We did not know how to do it, so we had to think about it, and so it took days, sometimes even weeks. Like erg multi multi account ergonomization uh, optimization, like auto follow, auto stuff like that. We said, why why don't we just add it? Let's just do a little sprint on it and just fix it in a matter of days. In Flash, it would have been a mega hassle, and we'd have to work on that and think on it for weeks and stuff like. <laughs> oh, what is the second ornament? for the fourth, the level 200. We can show you it. We can show you it, of course. The animated one. We have one visual. Let's show you it again. IT, please, show us. Please show us. In the beginning, I was going to... This is it. Look how beautiful is it. Come on. This is the ornaments that you will have for the third uh, level. Level 150 and uh, 3,000 to 3,500 achievement points. But this is what you're getting. Level 150. The fourth level, it will be the same one, and here's as I said earlier, it will be the same one, but animated. Oh, let's go! Let's go! Let's go, so cool. I really like it. Yeah, it's so badass, it's so stylish, but this one for the third level, and then an animated version for the fourth one. And as I said, yes, animation. Animation, ornaments, in terms of performance and stuff like that, with, yeah, it's war, but we will bring that to you. <laughs> This is the constant perpetual war between the designers and the client side that have to make it happen for you. It's just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Making jokes about frame. Somebody asked earlier, can we limit frames? Yes, you can already limit frames on your settings by going to settings. It's already an option that is available. There's a, a global optimization for multi-accountant that we wanted to bring. It's FPS and uh, zone cap. We wanted to limit something to when you're navigating and the navig and the screen is in the back, it scales down to 12 frames because you don't see it. We still have some optimization passes to do on that so that it's more fluid and better. I want to quickly bounce on the screen size. It's something that will happen, the SLX problem. Uh, merchant mode, Alan is never coming back. <laughs> it's, just, it's something that is never coming back. <laughs> the community does not want it to go back. It's just the classical players that really miss it and want it to come back. <laughs> we have done that to reduce the alternative economy. So bots and stuff like that. <laughs> Take it easy on chat, dude. <laughs> Sorry I riled you up like that. But yeah. The Oh, there is a little bug with millions and billions, so numbers that weren't separated. They've done a little experience recently where... I don't know why he was talking about it. The mobile release date, nothing like that. 
<laughs> I don't have that problem of commas and billions. I'm poor. <laughs> All you have to do is have a thousand commas to see that the the numbers are not properly uh, broken down. <laughs> It was used for money laundering, bots and stuff like that. That would generate big volumes and sell stuff. Or hacks and stuff like that. They would use merchant mode to not be officially pay taxes on it and show it on. Uh... There was a book that was brought to me that Sadida would axe. Eh? It's ally, something. Uh, cheaper nuggets? Yes, we have taken the feedback on board. But we really have to take the decision not lightly because if we change the ah what we've observed on the first week, if we change the price of nuggets, will be less valid. The data that we've collected, we have to see what is feasible. Really, the better. We can't be a priority in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, it would. I would fucking love to have a day and night cycle, but. <sighs> It's not something that we've tested client side. We have to see what it looks client side first before we give you that. And it can't be the priority right now with all the bugs and problems that we have to remedy right now. <laughs> and after that, we said we wanted to add the, uh, the, the, oh, this is just a joke. They've thought about adding um, a climate that they have in Rube in game so that it's only one climate to work and it's always gray and rainy. <laughs> On the server release, we have lots of points that we want to enhance and better in December with the release of new servers. So we're still working on a lot of things in the background. Will there be any... The Dramax Theater, we want to modify on Tuesday. It should correspond with a lot of players that are doing Dramax by then. For those of you who have already done it, I'm really sorry about that. But we have a big modification that is coming. Really cool that will make Dramax much more fluid and better to play as a dungeon, generally speaking. You can stop spamming this uh, question, but the tokens, the reward tokens, will be a monetary thing that you will be able to use with an NPC and on the actual service and on the new release service so that you can customize skins and stuff like that. We'll add some, an enormous amount of cosmetics that you'll be able to buy on these cosmetics. And you will be able to buy them with the number of tokens that you generate depending on which level you reach, whether it's 150, 100 or 200, for the more trier harders amongst you. I'm really looking at the time very quickly because we've been here for two and a half hours. <laughs> it's nearly, uh, it's nearly uh, time to go and eat. <laughs> uh, one last question each. I love this tradition. When they want to end the live, each one of them takes a question from chat and they read it, and it's the opportunity to just put your question there at the last minute. <clears throat> I'm gonna pass this question to Koto. Question on MacBooks. <clears throat> Some people are not able to download the game or play the game, and they have a black screen when they release when they launch the game. And there is a post on the forum that I've uh, spoken to players. They've sent us out their logs and stuff like that. And uh, I've got a few qu questions to ask to those people. And if you have any Mac cases, <clears throat> any problems that you're facing. His name was Mac something. Ah, question about GPS. GPS, right. On the, on, the, on, the, on the Speta, it's activated as a base. So the moment you have, you, if you manage to get a pet mount or mount, automatic GPS, right? It's already activated on those. And for Unity, we want what 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 they want to bring gps and make it free in unity for everyone with the new server releases everybody gets free gps it will become a feature in the game permanent feature what 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 the fuck <laughs> one last question for koto holy shit I can't read chat, that is quite quick. <laughs> oh my god, GPS potions now are worth nothing! <laughs> so... 
we want to add GPS to on foot for the better, just for the better. We want to we want to put a little threshold where if you reach it, then you gain GPS automatically without having to have a mount or a pet's mount on foot. Yes, on foot, Slix. I'm really sorry because I've given an information I feel like I shouldn't have. It's gonna have big ripple effects and consequences. I can answer this one very quickly. I've seen it spammed a lot. I don't know if you. I I can keep it. Trades between groups. Oh, a, a shared inventory between groups. No, this is not coming anytime soon. It's so costly to develop. Yeah, no, it's not something that we want to bring. There's no point in asking me the questions, Artagoon. <laughs> They're reading from a different chat. I'm not that important yet. <laughs> they don't read from my chat. And it's in English and they're doing the live in French, so no chance. <laughs> Thank you very much all for um, doing it. It was a beautiful life, but it was necessary. At this point in time, it was absolutely necessary. We knew it was going to be a uh, uh, an important one, a very punchy one. It was very much awaited for. We have tried to be as suspense as possible. We have give given a lot from our from ourselves in this life. And I've only used the term mitigated twice. <laughs> Holy shit. That's why I was waiting for it too much, Lumino, because I knew it was gonna be important. And they Yeah, you see you see why I was expecting it so much. Yeah, so we will communicate to you about the um uh, GPS interfaces, the stuff that we're working on in the background, and the possible, it wasn't the, the simplest live of the year, but it was so important. So thank you very much, both of you, for being here. Oop. Thank you all as well, community side, for following us, for uh, listening to this craziness, which Unity was a big, 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 big topic, and being so active on the beta and giving us so much feedback. I want to remind that we've got nearly 5,000 foreign posts in a week. You guys are nuts, and thank you so much for the crazy stuff that you have done. The next Unity Live will be during the Ankama convention, which will happen in a week and a half. Oh shit, I don't know if I've got my visa yet. For those of you that are asking, yes, a big part of the team will be there. We will be physically present in the stand. We will be ex able to exchange with you, talk about the game, the project, everything. And I will tell you goodbye. See you later. Bye. What the absolute fuck you guys is happening this is wild this is wild did i tell you or did i not tell you that this was going to be one of the most important ones the communication strategy that they've adopted since papino took over and incidentally i started doing these translations i clearly can see a big difference they are facing stuff head on uh, I've, I've mentioned this yesterday the biggest indicator that things were changing for me was that emergency live he did one of the first ones I've translated where he said if things go wrong I will come here and he came he did an emergency live and he tackled the problem head-on and that has not changed since and I knew a lot of the problems that we had while they were blowing up in the background and the community was worried and stuff like that I knew they were going to address it head-on and what do you know? They've just nailed it. And not only did they nail it, but they turned it around. For me, I would like to say there were two things that really, really, really caught my attention at the deepest level. The first one is they are listening to feedback and they said, we're going to make changes. We are going to propose them, show them to you. You test them. If you like them, we will implement them as they are. If you don't like them, we will listen to you and then go back to the drawing board. And that's a mega win for me, which tells me they are sort of working on what the community wants rather than their own vision. And I will die regardless. I will just do what I want, which is great, which is great. It's rare when you see a company listen to feedback in this kind of level. The other thing is uh, he's clarified a lot of things that were happening in the background with uh, the Colibri woman. She did something out of her own that was not asked for that was not validated by the team and she created a lot of problems for them so now we understand that whole dynamic in the background that is happening the third thing the gps fucking mount becoming free for everyone let's go <laughs> let's fucking go the fourth thing was um oh they were hiring the guy who made this post so the uh, oh my god, the UI is gonna become so cool. It's gonna be so fucking cool. I can't believe it. But the UI, the interfaces, 
Unity is gonna be a fucking banger when it's released. The guy who made this post that we've discussed amply in the past, who proposed alternatives, options, because he's seen that uh, Ankama has gone with the octagonal, the sharp edges design, these two. He said, cool, you can have that, but you can also have these round ones and you can have a sort of options to give the community. I'm loving that they have contacted the guy and they want to work with him because it's urgent, it's important.